Don, the auction professor here. Um, today I just thought I'd talk a little bit about um, how to expand your eBay business. Um, everybody wants to make more money. Everybody's looking ahead to try and increase their sales. Um, but there's a lot of things you can do right now and things you can investigate for the future. Um, for most people though, what you would want to do is expand your categories that you're in right now. So if you're just doing clothing and books and things like that, there's so many other areas that you're missing. Every place you go to to look for the clothing and the books, you can also find a lot of other collectibles and things like that, especially the garage sales, thrift stores, um, you know, the church sales, the rummage sales, um, antique thrift store malls, um, antique malls. Everywhere you go, you can find pretty much all kinds of mixed items. But if you're only going for clothing and books and the basics and video games and things like that, you're missing out. You're not expanding your business to the appropriate way. Another thing you want to look at is actually looking at items that make a bigger profit than the items that you're currently selling if the profit margin's low. If you're selling 100 pairs of jeans a week and you're only making 5 bucks a pair of jeans, that's not a big, huge profit margin there. Um, and your time would be better spent selling items that were worth more. Um, but again, a lot of people are afraid or don't know what is going to be worth more or afraid to step into a category that they're not familiar with. That's why you need to start off small and, and pick another area to look into. Um, you can kind of look around to see what you're seeing all the time. Let's say you go to a thrift stores and you always see records. Start looking through the records. Um, there's so many other items that you could buy, toys or little doodads or, or um, off the even the kitchen goods and, and kitchen equipment or you know um, hardware items and, and uh, tools. All that kind of stuff sells very well. Um, and, and we sell in pretty much any category that makes us money. If a category that we are doing in, the profit margins just starts dropping and dropping, we're going to move to somewhere else. That's one reason that we started off, you know, and, and moved away from clothing. When our business first started off, we had hundreds, probably a thousand pieces of clothing up. Literally, maybe more than that, that we cross-listed on Amazon. We literally had like a thousand pieces of clothing when we first started off. Um, but we soon realized that the profit margin just wasn't there and we weren't able to find the, the constant supply of top-end clothing to make the huge profits that we wanted. So at that point, we literally looked into other items and, and we ran across a couple bulk lots of postcards and realized, wow, that there's a ton of money to be made in small paper. Uh, but we started changing what we looked for after we realized the paper were such good sellers and such high profit margins. And as I've shown you in other videos, the amount of space that these items take up is just such a horrendously small amount of space compared to what you would spend in space-wise for clothing and shoes and such forth. I can get away with carrying probably ten times as many items as most people I know. Um, and have a higher dollar of actual um, inventory than them in half the space. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous the amount of space you can save by selling small items. And they still make just as much profit, if not more, than anything else we sell. But the stuff takes up such a small space. It's a huge profit margin. I've showed you some things that people just, you know, I see the comments, you're puzzled, you don't believe that this can sell for that, and how could I find this stuff? It's out there if you look for it. I, honestly, I swear to you it is. Everything I've sold is available to anybody. Um, if you look at some of the videos, some of the comments now, you'll see people saying, yeah, because of you I found this or I found that, or now I'm looking for this and I've just sold my first record, I've sold my first postcard, or whatever the case may be. I get emails now through, our, through uh, um, YouTube and as well through our Facebook group um, talking about things that they find and stuff. People are finding it. They're looking for other areas. That's what you need to do. Once you get that first big hit and you get a huge amount of stuff to sell in the other categories, you're going to realize that the paper and all these other items have a higher return on your investment than anything else. Clothing returns too, like a buyer returns are much higher, 20-30% in some areas in clothing for people. I mean, it's just an insane amount. Even when you list all the details on the sizes and descriptions, you're still going to not have somebody happy. And with, you know, free returns and 30-day return period, people are going to be wearing clothing and then returning it after they've used it constantly, is my opinion. That's why we took all of our clothing pretty much off of, of Amazon in the first place because the returns on Amazon are crazy. Um, we learned that years ago and we stopped doing it years ago. Um, but again, as I said, paper is where it's at. If you want to expand your business, you're going to have to pick a little area or expand to a different category that you would never thought of before. Or, you know, start doing retail arbitrage for Christmas or whatever year, whatever time you need to do that at. Um, that's another option. Scanning books, if you haven't done that and you're only doing clothing. Checking out the antiques, that's that's what we do, that's what works for us, and 
talked to many people now and other people have subscribed to my channel too and they're they're seeing the difference they're seeing the huge amount of profits in it I would never be where I'm at now selling clothing it just wouldn't have happened we couldn't have acquired enough good clothing and stored it in this, the facilities that we have we've got two areas that we store in this this facility here and then an outside uh, warehouse area for just records that's it musical records and some just things like that we would never be where we we're at if we just had to deal with clothing it just wouldn't have been physically possible for us to store as much clothing to work up to where we needed to be um, otherwise the thousand pieces took up our entire garage an entire wall I couldn't get my car in there anymore uh, nowadays you know the records are the biggest problem we have for storage but it's a big profit maker so it pays for itself um, my garage is ours again. I don't do all those clothing pieces, or if we do, we keep them down to a couple racks. Um, I think we have two of these shelvings with clothing on it, and that's it. Um, so, you know, that kind of tells you space-wise. Maybe that's what most people might have, but for us, I want the most we can get out of the space we have, and that's small items that sell much better than, than clothing for us. Um, so if you're not hitting the, the numbers and you want to keep increasing, you're not doing 20% increase every year or 10% or whatever you're projecting yourself to do, expand your categories. Do a little by little. Pick one category you see all the time at the thrift stores and attack it. See if you can make anything out of that category. The worst case scenario, you learn a new category so when you're going out shopping at garage sales or thrift stores or flea markets or wherever you go to find stuff, you've got at least a couple other items to look for. It makes no sense to go to a sale and only look for shoes and only look for books or a couple items. I look for everything. Anything at that sale that's sellable, I'm going to look for. Uh, and if I don't know the area, I'm sure as heck going to learn it next time. So when I go there, I'll, I'll know what to do and how to get it and, and what the best price is to pay for it. Um, but that's just a little something for, for you to think about. Expand your fields. That's what you're going to do to expand your business. You have to sell more categories. You have to sell more items. Not just cheap items, not just junk items, don't just throw stuff up there. Research the items and you're going to make some more money. Uh, pick a couple more categories. If you're selling two this year, sell two more next year and two more the year after that. So in three years you're doing six more items categories. Whatever it takes. If you can do a new category every month, do it. Every category you can expand it and sell items in is the best. Pick some niches that you can literally center in on that's going to be your bread and butter. But as you slowly build up these other categories, you're going to get more and more niches. We've got probably 10, 15 niches now that we can sell, you know, specialized items that a lot of people don't mess with. And that's just from doing just this, starting off from zero. We started off, you know, almost five years ago just selling clothing. The only thing we knew really in a few military items. And now we sell in 15, 20 or more categories, all different kinds of items from every bit of item you can imagine from glassware to pottery, um, clothing, books, records, movies, videotapes, DVDs, video games, vintage video games, um, you name it, we, we sell it. Whatever it is, restaurant equipment, uh, computer equipment, some camera equipment, um, hi-fi equipment, whatever the case may be, if it makes money, it's a high profit item, we're going to look for it and we're going to try and buy it whenever we can. But that's just a few words of wisdom. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button if you did. Please subscribe if you haven't and tell a friend.